What's up everybody? Griever here and today we are finally going to be taking a look at this, the Venom Pro from the Nitro Shot line by Dart Zone. So I bought this off of Target.com with my own money um, and as always with any of my reviews whether it is purchased by me or given to me, um, all my opinions are 100% my own, no questions asked. So with that being said, we will go over the gamut of the blaster itself. We are going to go over the aesthetics of it, how it works, what does it come with, take it over to the workbench to see the insides of it, and then I'm going to give you my final thoughts on it. So, as I said, this is part of the Nitro Shot line, and what the Nitro Shot line is, is just a way for darts on to remake their darts, essentially. But uh, it, there are two blasters right now in the line. The Venom Pro and then the Max Striker 2.0. Uh, currently, I do not have plans to get a Max Striker 2.0. Um, I truly have a lot of pump action blasters to begin with. And honestly, after getting the Nexus Pro, I really don't foresee getting the gimmick version of it. Um, but if enough people maybe change my mind, maybe I'll pick one up and take a look at it. But either way, um, how this, what this comes with is, besides the blaster itself, it comes with 24 of those nitro darts, and not one, but two magazines that go right here in the grip, and the cool thing about this is, these are not angled talon magazines, but these are actually basically nightingale, um, geometry, so you have that, and then here I have my worker nightingale mag, and it goes in totally fine. I've played around with both of them, and these have no issues in this whatsoever. But now you're asking yourself, well, what does it run on if it's a flywheel? It's got to take batteries. Um, yes, it does take a battery. And Dart Zone is nice enough to actually provide you with the battery. Uh, this is a rechargeable Lion battery. Uh, it is 7.4 volts, um, 1,000 milliamps. Um, I know next to nothing about lipos or lions, so I have no idea what that means, but it works. So there is that. So going over the aesthetics of the black, oh, well, we'll, first we'll go over how it works. You have a black thumb screw up here, which gives you access to the front part of the pistol and here you do have a XT30 connector if I'm wrong I will fix it down in the bottom but I believe this is an XT30 because it's the same one that's in where the hell did it go up oh, the same one that's in the uh, Nightingale so you just plug this in uh, put the battery back in there don't bend the battery because I know that's supposed to be bad, so you can tell I use these oh so 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 much. There we go. That should be fine. Screw it back on, and that's it. You're good to go. Uh, there is a safety on here, and the safety is actually pretty practical. Uh, you have on this side of the blaster S for safe and F for fire. Now, while it is in safe mode, no matter what, it will not activate the rev trigger or the actual trigger itself. Uh, what you would do is, once you are ready, you take your magazine. I only have three darts in here for now. Load it up. Set it to F for fire. And this gray beaver tail on the back of it is actually the rev trigger. So you just basically have to, sorry, that was right on the mic. Uh, you basically just have to grip the blaster and it starts revving. And this is full auto. So once you're ready to go, you fire the darts. And I want to say, I believe this has been clocked to do seven darts a second. So I mean, you're basically going to, if you full auto the entire mag, you're basically done in like two seconds. So there is that. But 
Um, now, while it's in fire, you can still rev, but not pull the trigger on it. But, as I said, if you go to safe, everything locks up, and you don't have to worry about it. So, now that we see how it works, let's go over the aesthetics of it. Um, a lot of people say that this is kind of ugly, and they're not wrong. Um, this is a chunk of a blaster, especially the upper portion of it. So, the grip in and of itself is not terrible. Yeah, I do have a little bit of, like, space there, but once the magazine's in, it really doesn't bother me. So, I'm not too, too worried about that. Uh, you have your beaver tail style uh, safety there. So, it's very kind of 1911-esque with that. Um, well, not safety, but rev trigger, which replaces a safety. You have Picatinny rail on top, and you do have this little green aperture thing that just slides on the front here. I will be honest, I don't know the exact way it's supposed to go. I put it on like this so that the front end kind of matches up. I have seen people put it on like this, like that. I mean, it's it's just the iron sight, so I think so long as it's on, I don't really foresee a big deal on how it faces because it's not a fiber optic. It's literally just a line of plastic. Uh, the green is okay. Um, it does match well, obviously, with the magazines. Um, it's also part of the Nitro Shot line, so it matches also the Max Striker. It's not my favorite green. Um, I will be 100% honest. But it's not terrible. Like, I've seen worse designed pistols than this. And truth be told, yes, they could have slimmed it down like the Nightingale a bit. But, I mean, truthfully, this does have a bit bigger, I want to say, I think, bigger flywheels. So it makes sense that it is a gauche bit taller. Um, but overall, like I said, I've seen worse, and this isn't terrible. Um, again, mentioned, you have full pick, and pick, pick a tinny rail on top. Uh, you have the front end, and this uh, front end muzzle does accept the worker and the dart zone uh, P cars or scar barrels. It does not work with the bearing scar, though, because of the way it's designed. It does not fit into there. It's basically a huge friction fit for the uh, P car or the scar barrel. So you just shove it in there, and it does work. So if you want to add a scar barrel to it, you technically can, and that's totally cool. Um, outside of that, you have your uh, mag release right here. And yes, I know everyone's going to say, oh, well, it's, it's right-handed. It's for right-handed people. Don't Aren't you going to constantly hit it? With any of these particularly designed mag releases, I have never had a problem where I accidentally hit it hard enough to drop a mag in the middle of doing something. And I will just leave that at that. Um, so, yeah, I think that kind of covers everything at this point here. So why don't we go to the workbench? We'll take a look at the inside of this. We'll also take a closer look at what a nitro dart is. And then I will give you my final thoughts on this. The Venom Pro, I've already taken out all the screws and other things and such. A um, couple of things I want to note here. One is the orange front end of it, like a lot of the dart zone blasters nowadays is just held on by two screws on front, so it's very easy to remove the front end piece of it. Um, I would also suggest removing the battery door with that as well, and obviously you do need to take this off if you <laughs> wind up opening it up. Uh, funny enough, once this is opened, the barrel in and of itself um, is very easy to come out. Uh, it's just kind of like a friction fit and then fitted in with the front orange piece. And you can just pull it right out. It's super simple. Uh, other thing I want to make note of is some of the screws are a little difficult to get to. Like up here, you can see these two. They're kind of hidden by the green plate. Uh, but once you get the screws out of the green plate, you can actually kind of 
maneuver this out of the way, so to speak. Uh, also, the beaver tail uh, rev trigger. You have a one. You have a um, a coil spring here to actually place the pressure on it. But the way this attaches is an interesting uh, little uh, screw piece here, and it's actually two part. It's a post on this side of it, and then the screw which holds the other side of the post on that side. Uh, so yeah, just a little interesting tidbit. Oh, that's going to be a pain in the butt. Right, no, there we go. All right, so yeah, just a couple of little things I wanted to point out in regards to that before we open up the blaster. But also, since we're at the workbench, it's a little easier for me to talk about. I just wanted to go over like the evolution of the dart zone dart, which has now become so kind of like ubiquitous next to like worker darts like i th i want to say i believe next to worker darts they're like the second highest used dart in the hobby probably probably the most used because of the availability well max striker darts might be but the bamboo darts with the pro 1.01 and 1.1 are really what started everything so this was the original bamboo dart a kind of I want to say normal green <laughs> uh, with the orange tip with just the little uh, cylindrical cutout in it. And you had a uh, little ribbing at the back end of the dart and the front end of the dart. Then they moved on to the bamboo 2.0, which were basically bamboo um, striker darts because the striker dart came out with the red body and the gray triple triangle tip. Well, the bamboo dart, it went to more of a dull highlighter yellow or highlighter green for the body in and of itself with purple heads or dark purple heads. And the triple triangle that was very similar found in the Max striker darts. Then we get into the, I guess, updated version of the bamboo 2.0 darts which are the last ones that i got so i don't know maybe they're bamboo 2.5s but it's a lighter green um it's almost a combination of the two greens and red tips but still keeping the triple triangle heads so they were finally getting there and then we have these the nitro shot darts which add an extra set of ribbing in the middle of the dart Still the same dart head, but now they've gone to a lighter purple, I guess, to kind of match their um, aesthetic and everything. But yeah, this is now like bamboo dart 3.14, maybe. I don't know. It's like basically the last iteration of the bamboo dart, which is now called the nitro dart. Uh, I mean, the darts are really good. I mean, we know bamboo darts work really well. Um, the addition of the middle rib definitely adds more purchase to the dart uh these are actually uh some bad darts that i had gotten with one of the foam shotguns and even these are mimicking the middle rim uh the middle rib uh bamboo dart even though these are fvjs and i would never ever ever use these things because fvjs are bad um but even worker worker style bamboo darts um they have that middle rib too so maybe there is something to it and it was like oh that does help so but anyway i just thought it was kind of a neat little thing of like looking at the evolution of the dart as it kind of, as it was moving along so um all right so yeah now with that done let's take a look at the inside of the venom pro and uh, you little it's always something I swear I missed like one little thing okay this comes apart in a lot of different sections so the grip comes apart in two pieces or three pieces um, interesting no yeah two pieces three if you count the beaver tail but on this side you have the uh, trigger release which is its own um, 
its own mechanism screwed in completely, which is really nice. So you don't have to worry about trying to futz with that if it comes loose or something. I'm just going to take these screws and put them away. So, yeah, that's actually really nice. I like that. Uh, the medallion, of course, is um, snapped into place. So if you were going to paint this up and you wanted to keep the medallion or do it a different color, you can easily remove that. No, or should be able to remove that. No problem. So with that off, I can then take the green part off, which then gets you to the primary parts of the blaster. And here we can see a very, very compact flywheel setup here. Um, actually take off this. I didn't know this came off in one in like its own separate piece. Yeah, this is so like individually put together. It's actually really nice if you want to uh, eventually, which I probably will do, uh, eventually paint it up. I can just remove all of the internals in almost like one shot, keeping it all together, paint the body, and then just put it all back together. Um, like this top rail is its own thing. So you actually don't even have to unscrew the top rail. All you have to do is remove the handle and unscrew the green part. And then that's really it. You don't have to unscrew the, uh, the finger guard or the top rail. Um, those are all their own thing, but yeah, you can see here like all the different, like you have your two micro switches, one for your rev, one for the actual like trigger, which is right here, your pusher mech, your flywheels and your barrel. So all in all, uh, pretty good, pretty well set up, uh, flywheel blaster for certain um and oh on the opposite side you can see here uh this is where the power switch goes uh so you have that and so you have the you have your on here it's actually not connected directly to it but it's just a mechanical switch so when you wanted to put it from safe to fire or basically in essence off to on um, it's just a mechanical switch that actually works in conjunction on the opposite side. So there's that. Uh, yeah. So, oh, and also the Venom Pro Plate does unscrew and come off. So you can also paint that very easily individually along with the white squares, just like always you can unscrew and do that. And even the darts on plate, you could just easily pop off because it looks like that snapped in as well so yeah that's the internals of this thing so i'm going to put this back together i don't foresee any major problems with it my only concern is going to be the red um the beaver tail because i think that's just going to be tricky with this spring setup to get it back in and you know all together and such but outside of that yeah, I'm going to put this together and then I'm going to give you my final thoughts on the uh, Venom Pro. Okay, so my final thoughts on the Venom Pro. Um, I have to say I am thoroughly impressed with this for a couple of different reasons. One, um, we didn't talk about it earlier, but the price for this thing and what you get with it. So for what you get in box is a blaster. Two Nightingale Geometry Magazines, 24 darts of new Nitro Shots, a charger and a battery for this thing for 50 bucks. That's 50 United States dollars. That is a damn good deal. I mean, as far as I know, that trumps like anything that's currently available to date. I mean, uh, Nightingale 2.0, you're shelling out, I think, like 80 or 90 bucks for the blaster alone. And that's, I don't believe it comes with a magazine, or if so, maybe come with one, and no battery and no darts. So already this is, well, you know, very much a step ahead. So I do have a couple cons on here, but they're mostly the pros. So for the pro, 
I do like the way this revs. Um, I'm not a fan of, as many of you know, I'm not a fan of flywheels because I hate the rev up and the constant whirring noise. So one thing I did like about the Nightingale is it revs and fires with the trigger pull. So there is no rev on it. You just pull, you half pull the trigger. It revs for a hot second, pull the trigger, fires the dart, let go, and then it winds down. And that's it. Um, the Venom Pro, you do have to wind up the wheels going, which, fine, it happens. But instead of having a second trigger down here, which can be confusing or annoying or whatever, you have this nice little beaver tail in the back, which on real steel, 1911s, this is your safety. So you're constantly always pushing into that anyway. So, I mean, I don't own anything real. I don't own any like actual real steel firearm. But I mean, honestly, this is not a terrible way to rev it because all you have to do is just hold it and just squeeze ever so slightly and you're revving your blaster. Uh, it's full auto, which is great. Uh, my my Nightingale is single action, or not single action, it's semi-auto. This is full auto, so there is that. The mag release is really smooth, and it does gravity drop, which is awesome. Now, the con and the elephant in the room is the size of it. This is a chunk of a blaster. But it does have slightly bigger wheels than what would be in the Nightingale. It also has a bit more room for the battery, which is fine and understandable. But because of that, it is a little bit taller. So a lot of people are like, oh, it's ugly, it's ugly, it's ugly. Is it the best looking blaster on the market? No. But it gets the job done. It's cheap. It's convenient. And honestly, I think it's definitely worth the money. Now, one thing I will note because I, that I did not mention earlier is you may have also noticed when we were in the uh, on the bench is these grates on it. Now these actually do serve a nice purpose in the fact that those are vents for your flywheels and the motors, which honestly I think is a great idea. Yes, there are some naysayers who may say, oh, it's going to be easy to get dirt and grime and all that kind of stuff in it. But as long as you're not constantly throwing this thing in the dirt, I don't foresee that being a problem. Um, it's going to keep your motors cool or at least vent the heat out of them, which would give longevity to your motors, which is always a good thing, so you don't have to swap them out. But overall, I think it's a really nice design consideration. So, yeah. Over and all, if you are looking for a competitive pistol that isn't spring-powered, I would definitely say pick up a Venom Pro. Um, it's cheap and affordable, and you basically get everything you need right out of the box. Like, what more can you say to that? So, that's going to be it for this video. And as always, if you enjoyed the content we put here on the channel, please throw us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Venom Pro. And is it as ugly as everybody says? Let me know. I love reading those comments and everything. And, oh, don't forget to click that little bell icon. Otherwise, you may not know when me and Arlene are doing our silliness here on the channel. And don't forget, we do have the P.O. Box, Snail Mail, Lost Art. Just saying. Um, but yeah, again, thank you very much for joining me for this video and I will see you guys next time. Later.